theme of the gospel was faith. And this week is no exception. Still talking about faith. And we have to come to Jesus within our faith. Not like the folks in Nazareth. And chapter 11 of Hebrews is dedicated to faith. It starts with a definition of faith. To have faith is to be sure of things we hope for. To be certain of things we cannot see. It is by faith that we understand that the universe was created by God's word. So that what can be seen was made of what cannot be seen. Let us keep this definition in mind. Mark tells us today, Jesus couldn't perform any miracles in Nazareth because of their lack of faith. And I want to ask the question always, have anyone ever doubted the power of Jesus? I know I have, church. I know there's some other testimonies out there, but we'll talk about that later. We must remember that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And forever and ever, one would think that their homeboy returns home. The town would roll out the red carpet. Words of his works have reached them, and still they doubt it. Jesus could do anything with his father's assistance. However, with faith, we need to cooperate fully with Jesus. We have to acknowledge his power, might, and love, and try to live a life of cooperation with Jesus' plans for salvation. The people of Nazareth did not believe in him. They questioned his resume. Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary? How could he have such power and might? However, for example, just a few weeks ago in the gospel, Jesus was sleeping in the boat. And we all know that our Lord does not sleep or slumber. And when a storm comes up, his disciples are terrified. And what did they do? They woke him up. They woke Jesus up to do something that they forgot that who they were with. Do we ever, do we ever forget the power of Jesus? They had the, what they thought was the right solution. However, Jesus said to them, and I'm paraphrasing Mark, Jesus got to their faces, asking them, what is the matter with all of you? Why are you frightened? Do you still have any faith? Church, I pray that Jesus would not have to ask that question of me. But in that case, Jesus was able to answer their prayers. He was able to rebuke the wind and calm the waves. And even though his disciples lacked sufficient faith, in other words, their lack of faith didn't put a crimp in Jesus' style. Their lack of faith wasn't a sufficient obstacle to his power to save them. As Jesus tells us in another gospel, if your faith is the size of a mustard seed, you can do great things. And the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds, but grows into a big bush. Because Jesus has great, done great things for us, church. Hasn't he? I know somebody out there know what I'm talking about. Jesus has done great things for those who know and trust him. Just think what he could have done for the people in his hometown. I've been asked by many, what is the best way to pray? I feel that there's no right or wrong way to pray. You know God takes us as we are, church. And you, we shouldn't feel guilty when it seems that our prayers have gone unanswered, as if it was our fault. I want to give this flesh. Jesus works at his own speed. Wait on the Lord. But we want it now, rationalizing, using such statements as, God must not be pleased with me, or it must be my fault, or it might be the level of my faith, or it's our lack of proper devotion that forces God to say no to us. There are times that God does answer prayers in the way we want him to. And we don't acknowledge that the answer was right in the front of us. I've been there and done that many times. 
Be assured that God meets us at our level of need, not at our level of want. It's important, I feel, in our relationship with the Lord that we, that we let him have the power that is his. We want control so much that we un unwillingly believe sometimes that we can control God too. Now that may sound familiar to many of you. If not, just think of 45. Did I say something wrong? Our faith speaks to us sometimes, telling us to give up. Give up tr trying to wrestle control away from God. We should give up the notion of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesus, believing that our prayers, our piety, our goodness, and our faith is so powerful that God must give in to our requests. Maybe Jesus couldn't perform any miracles in his hometown, not because their lack of faith in him was insufficient, but church, it was because the faith in themselves was too great. And that brings me back to the fishermen in the boat. Remember, they were fishermen, and they all had solid skills as sailors. Fishermen had weathered many storms. However, they became frightened because their scales, skills were not the match for this storm. They turned to Jesus, awakening him to calm the wind and sea. And then he turned to them and said, ye of little faith. Haven't we sometimes felt we could solve a problem? We did everything we could do, just like those fishermen, but the problem still exists. After we have exhausted ourselves, we wake Jesus up to help us. Am I speaking out of school on this church? I have heard this line several times, and maybe you have too. I had did all that I could do, all that I could do, and then I turned to God. Also, I missed church because I was going through something. To me, that time, you should be in church. <laughs> Praying with your family for a breakthrough. Sitting in church and thinking that, I got to do this, I got to do that. We just have to sit still and let God be in charge. We believe that we're in control, that our image of Jesus is somehow greater than who Jesus really is. However, Jesus doesn't force himself on others, not on his neighbors and certainly not on us. Jesus doesn't hurl miracles at those who don't want them, not as his own relatives and certainly not on us. But you know, that is not what usually bugs us about God. You and I are not like the people of Nazareth, are we, church? We rationalize to ourselves Hey, I got faith. I come to Mass on Sunday as much as I can. I pay my tithes. So God, send me my miracle. You and I want God to force himself on us. Don't we? Well, maybe not, church. Maybe not. What if the miracles that God wants to perform isn't the miracles that we want God to perform? What if God wants to perform a holiness miracle? You know, somehow getting us to stop sinning, to stop gossiping, to be more generous, more patient, more loving. What if God wants to stir in us holy action, not so that our lives will be better, but that the lives of others will be better? During these times, we need to refocus our role as disciples. Paul's insight from the second reading speaks to us today. To be a disciple of Christ, we too need to be courageous and faithful in all things, even if it's contrary to the ways of the world or what is now socially acceptable. And can I come off script just a little bit, church? We have a sign on our marquee out there saying that we're praying for Taylor. And I had an experience yesterday 
that some reporters from WBFF came up and they wanted to speak to someone about what did that sign mean. And I said, wow, they don't know what that means. And they asked me, are you pleased with being in a church in a city like this? And I said, this is our home. This is where we worship. This is the life that we have in this community. Then it's up to us if we acknowledge that, we got to do the work. We have to be bold and courageous and bringing this church down because the miracle we want God to do in Emerson Village is only going to come from the churches up and down this corridor. We need to refocus why we come to church because many times we come and think that our piety is going to save us. But there's people out there, innocent people, that need to be saved. And we need to just look at the church and say, we got to do more. We got to do more. As Martin Luther King said, if you give 50 cents, that's the best you can do. But if you give more, you get more back. God will bless this church, and he's blessing it today. But he's putting us on a mission, too. When you harm babies, like they did with that seven-year-old girl, that's, that's hurt my heart. It hurt a lot of hearts, but it also hurts my heart when one person dies on these streets. When is it enough for us to get up as an army and just face this and pray for this as we come along? Thank you for bearing with me with that. They don't even know, and I hope that I told them so they will know, but sometimes they don't believe. And sometimes they just have these notions about us. But we church, for the 90 years that this church has been in existence, we come this far by faith. We lean on the Lord. So we want to be his disciples. And now let me get back to this because maybe we don't really feel you want God to be God. Not if it means we may give a tenth of our gross income to the poor. Not if it means having to go hungry ourselves so that those who are starving might have food or shelter or clothes. We want God to be God, but not if it means we have to give up one bit of control we enjoy right now. Maybe our faith in Jesus is just fine. It's the faith we put ourselves at that's the problem. Maybe I must give in. Maybe I must let God be who God is, to let me be who I'm supposed to be, a child of God. Next time you and I are praying for miracles, let us remember that probably we have enough faith in God and that maybe just a little too faith in ourselves. Too much control, too much I know what I need, so please give it up. And not enough of Lord's help. Lord, help me to know what I need. We might pray instead, Lord, I don't want to be hard of face or stubborn of heart. Just get me to understand and believe, truly believe that in my weakness, I am strong. And that your grace, your most merciful grace, is enough for me. Do with me what you will. Now, church, that is faith, unfailing faith. We are aspired to be people of God by putting our faith and trust in God and to do his will. Then we will practice the kind of faith that produces miracles. Maybe not the miracles we're looking for, but the miracle God wants to perform. To reach out beyond ourselves, to serve others in the following instructions that Jesus gave us before he left us. The change we want to see will be up to all of us. The entire chapter of Hebrews 11 gives us evidence of what people of faith have won by their faith. Yet they did not receive what God has promised because, church, God has decided on an even better plan for them. Let God be God in our lives and acknowledge the miracles that God gives us each day. Thanks and praise God as often as you can, can daily. 
because he performed a miracle for many of us today. He woke us up. He got us to church on time. You heard that, he got us to church one time. <laughs> and he's going to get us home safe if we believe. So do that daily, thanking God, when you can put two feet on the floor. Because God is good all the time.